Poverty is a major hindrance to growth and development, especially in developing countries of the world, such as Nigeria. Education, however, remains a formidable tool in waging war against poverty, diseases, and other challenges faced by these developing countries. Realizing that education is a basic need and a goal desired by many, whether rich, poor, young and old, leaders during the British colonial rule and post-colonial Nigeria accorded priority to education. The growth of Nigerian universities has evolved positively, particularly with the establishment of the National Universities Commission in 1962 to date. In 1980, the federal government of Nigeria announced the decision to establish seven federal universities of technology with the aim of enhancing technological development in the country. The Federal University of Technology, MENA, thus came into being. 1st February 1983, the last to be established of the seven federal universities of technology. The Foundation Vice-Chancellor, Professor Jonathan Othman Ndagi, was appointed in December 1982 alongside the first Chancellor of the University, who is also the Emir of Zaria, Alhaji Dr. Shehu Idris. The Pro-Chancellor and Chairman of the first Governing Council of the University were also appointed on 1st February 1983 to mark the foundation date of the University at the defunct Government Teachers College, Boso, now called Boso Campus. Having acquired the defunct Government Teachers College, Boso, the facilities were refurbished and additional structures constructed to accommodate the Central Administration Block, comprising the Vice-Chancellor's Office, the Registry, and Bursary. Nine classrooms, one laboratory each for Physics, Chemistry, biology, geography, and geology, the library, mini computer center, audiovisual center, male and female students' hostels, as well as 18 staff quarters were accorded priority. The recruitment of the foundation academic staff commenced in June 1983, while the first batch of the recruited academic staff reported on the 1st of December 1983, the second batch reported on the 3rd of January 1984. The first set of students reported for registration on the 13th of February 1984. I decided first to contract out the feeding of my students to Shiro Hotel, which to me was cheaper because we agreed at six naira a day per student. The main Senate building at the Boso campus completed in September 1985 to accommodate the Vice Chancellor's office, the registry and the bursary while the Student Affairs Division relocated to offices as well occupied by these units. I developed Boso campus considering two possibilities. One, to remain, to develop both a campus to a full campus. If I did not succeed in getting another area for further expansion. We have drastically expanded facilities in this Boso campus that you can see that this Boso campus is even bigger than many of these private universities. Science and engineering are core disciplines in any university of technology. The FUT MENA worked hard to establish four schools at the beginning. These include School of Science and Science Education, School of Agriculture and Agricultural Technology, the School of Environmental Technology, and the School of Engineering and Engineering Technology. I couldn't understand 
when I came in, was that there was no school of engineering assigned to me as some other universities of technology. And I couldn't understand why, as a university of technology, there shouldn't be a school of engineering. We had to fight it. And I think after uh, some serious discussion, all universities of technology were then assigned school of engineering technology. The School of Science and Science Education, initially known as the School of Foundation Studies and Science Education, was the first to be established in 1984 to host all basic science courses, which were compulsory for all students to take at the 100 level before proceeding to other schools. Precisely on the 28th of October 1984, the Senate of the University concluded arrangements for the creation of the other three schools. The School of Agriculture and Agricultural Technology commenced operations with the departments of animal and crop productions. Additional departments were added over time. The School of Environmental Technology kick-started with the Department of Architecture. The following additions were made to the school. Urban and Regional Planning, Building Technology, Surveying, and Geoinformatics. The School of Engineering and Engineering Technology has five departments. Agricultural Engineering, Chemical Engineering, Civil Engineering, Mechanical Engineering, Electrical, and Computer Engineering. The official commissioning of the Federal University of Technology, MENA, took place on the 1st of February 1986 by the former military president, General Ibrahim Badamusi Babangida. Between 1983 and 1990, Professor Jonathan Othman Ndagi served as the foundation vice chancellor of the institution. What was given to me by government through NUC was 35 million by the time I left. I must be grateful to God and through the two councils uh, I worked with. The first convocation ceremony took place on the 27th of January 1990 with 22 graduates and from then till date the university has graduated a total of 1,805,900 graduates. Total enrollment of students has risen from slightly above 100 in 1984 to over 16,000 in 2015. The staff strength has also gone up from about 50 in 1984 to 2,302 in 2015. The Federal University of Technology, MENA, witnessed steady growth and development under the leadership of Professor Suleiman Olatunji Adeyemi, a professor of civil engineering who served the university between 1990 and 1994. Again, you know, acquired the permanent site. I came in, uh, I did the master plan. I mean, that is, um, I was able to arrange the master plan for the, for the main campus. In an effort to become a key player in the global economic scene, Former military president General Ibrahim Babangida in June 1992 formed the third turning ceremony to mark the commencement of project execution on the main campus, Gidankwano. Since then, it has been work, work, and work. And so the first thing I had to do, therefore, is to strengthen the academic program of the university to reflect a true University of Technology. Suleiman Olatunji Adeyemi, a professor of civil engineering, started a number of projects, including the building of School of Environmental Technology, School of Engineering, the library, the staff housing, students' hostels, and roads. After you know, my tenure, people are able to continue, and that's what you now see today. 
Professor Adeyemi also introduced consultancy services for the purpose of generating revenue to supplement government funds. I strengthened that because I knew, I could foresee, you know, that uh, university must learn not to depend solely on subvention, you know, from, uh, from government. <laughs> Professor Ibrahim Umar was appointed on the 1st of August 1994 as the sole administrator who served the university as the third chief executive from 1994 to 1997. This followed the crisis that engulfed the university during which the council was dissolved. Having constituted another governing council, Professor Samuel Ali Migarba was appointed to serve as the acting vice chancellor on the 7th of August 1997. Shortly after, Dr. Muhammad Abdullah Dania, now a professor, was appointed as the vice chancellor from 1997 to 2002. The administration then chose a nuclear sort of uh, development so that you will have some nucleus and then as time went on, they will be expanding, expanding, expanding gradually. And if you go to uh, Boso, I mean, Gidankwano now, you'll appreciate that particular uh, uh, idea that the founding fathers had. The crisis that engulfed the university continued for a long time, but was later resolved through dialogue and the development both at the Bosa campus and Gidankwano campus began in earnest. If there was anything that I still remember that uh, I thank God for was, you know, being able to bring the two bodies together Dr. Mohamed Dania got approval and connected the Gidankwano campus, MENA, to the national grid. He also completed a number of projects embarked upon by his predecessors as well as introduced the tradition of inaugural lecture at the Federal University of Technology, MENA. The, the other things were just building on to what my predecessors did. We completed the environmental complex and we also completed some, I mean, one of the workshops under engineering, and we built the girls' hostels. Late Professor Joshua Olani Adeniyi served as the acting vice chancellor from 7th August to 2nd October 2002. Professor Hamad Tukur Sahad served as the vice chancellor of the Federal University of Technology, MENA, between 2002 and 2007 for a single term of five years. Professor Hamad Sahad Tukur, with a background of architecture, assumed office and evolved strategies to move the university to the next level. But when I came, I had one mission, not to be vice chancellor. I've come to develop the place. So every morning I wake up seven o'clock, I move around Boso and so on. He completed quite a number of abandoned projects and initiated the movement to the main campus of the university at Gidan Kwano, but faced some challenges. Uh, people are asking for about one point something billion for them to be able to move to the uh, main campus. Every department will come with his bill uh, that for engineering to move, you need 500 million. I mean, there's no 500 million anywhere in the system, even for the whole university. That time to a lot of plannings, skepticism, and so on. We are going to the bush. Uh, there will be secret court. Um, there will be a lot of uh, crime in that place. And if you look around, this is very, very rare. There is no abandoned project. Again, Professor Sahad Tuku adopted fresh measures to open up more sources of funding to make the movement to the permanent site a reality. Now we decided, look, students have to contribute to all this development. So we instituted a series of levies. Professor Hamad Tukro Sahad left substantial amount of money in commercial banks and the Apex Bank. Uh, as of 13th of November when I was leaving, I still remember I had in one account in our own accounts i left money for them to complete this project maybe 903 million and there are others in central bank 
because these are tied down to projects and so on. So something like one, 1.2 billion, say with this, man, you can move forward. This facilitated a smooth takeoff by Professor Mohamed Saliu Audu as the Vice Chancellor of Federal University of Technology, MENA, between 2007 and 2012. Professor Audu, on his part, executed more projects. I was happy and I still commend my predecessor, uh, Professor Tuku Saad, who, against all odds, decided to move the university to the permanent site. Mohamed Saliu Audu, a professor of mathematics, came in as the fifth vice chancellor of the university that has just moved to the permanent site. Professor Mohamed Saliu Audu completed the library and the information technology building. 1,000 seater capacity school of agriculture and agricultural technology, as well as made modification in the school of engineering and engineering technology, amongst others. Realizing that the world is changing, the university opened up new programs to keep up globalization and technology. And we did establish the school of information and communication technology, in which telecommunication engineering, computer engineering. IMT, the information and media technology, uh, are also part of the department that, uh, of course, including cyber security. Uh, uh, the IMT runs two programs, one in media technology and one in information and communication uh, uh, technology. Professor M.S. Audu also established the Search FM station to reach out to students and others within the university community and also people in the immediate environment. Professor Musbau Adewumi Akonji, the sixth substantive vice chancellor of the Federal University of Technology, MENA, appointed 2012, constructed the academic publishing center, having added two blocks to the electronics examination center. The project was funded by TET Fund. My immediate concern was to make outside, outsiders see what is happening. And how can they see that I invested a lot on purchase of bandwidth so that we'll be present on the web. And that has really assisted us. So we are now present on the web. Currently, internationally, by international ranking, there's an international uh, agency known as 4ICU. We are ranked, as of today, we are ranked number five in Nigeria and number 57 in Africa. Professor Akonji has also embarked on the construction of additional female students' hostels. 